now on This Week in History with Paul Waite. And I am Paul Waite and this is On This Week in History, which today is being filmed. Oh yes. Why is that then, Drew? So, we have this as an amazing podcast every week, so why not make it a visual podcast? Yeah, I think that's a good oh, idea. Oh yes, mm. you're sexy baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have been having a wonderful time overdosing on the Vikings. Mm. Uh, I watched 10 episodes of season 6, part 2, <laughs> uh, episodes 11 to 20 over the last four days. Uh, Bit watched, of a binge. I've watched episode 20, the fi- finale twice now, and it's, Ooh. in my opinion, the best ever final episode of any series I've ever really? seen. Really? Oh, nice. It's beautiful. It. Done, looking forward to that. Unlike Game of Thrones, that completely betrayed the fans and made yeah. a mockery of the whole wonderful Boo. series. Vikings writers do justice uh, to to the whole thing, really. Is it Michael it's Hurst? A, uh, it's just um, a beautiful piece of writing, lovely ending, appropriate who's left at the end and how it ends is... Um, Really quite something. So, um, with with that in mind, the first fact today is very appropriate. So, in 871, uh, there was the Battle of Ashdown, and Ethelred I and Alfred, his brother, who wasn't the king at the time, defeated uh, an invading Danish army. And, of course, seven years later, um, we actually had uh, the definitive battle at Eddington, where the Saxons finally defeated the, the Vikings, uh, which led to Guthrum being baptised as Athelstan in Wedmore Church, which is only about 11 miles from us today. Mm-hmm. And then um, another very um, uh, symbolic one, uh, we had, um, interestingly enough, over Christmas, we had um, William the Conqueror being crowned on Christmas Day. Um, but uh, in 1066, earlier in the year, King Harold I was crowned. Harold? Uh, Harold, it wasn't quite like that. So, uh, <laughs> Harold Godwinson mm. uh, uh, and uh, Callum and I were both know that if you drive from my house to Glastonbury across the levels, mm-hmm. you go past Godwin's Peat, which yep. is now a client of ours. Mm. Even better. So, um, uh, Godwinson obviously means son of Godwin. Yep. So, uh, that's a really, really interesting one. And then um, we, we, we go forward quite a few few years, actually. Um, so in 1649, I know that Drew will will now break into a childish grin when I say this. The Rump Parliament, as it was called, Rumpy uh. Pumpy, <laughs> votes to put Charles I on trial for treason. Mm. So um, this is obviously the the huge crisis that engulfed uh, the country at that time and led to um, to civil war. Obviously, but mm. um, uh, uh, so with poor old Charles, obviously ended up getting beheaded. Um, off with his head. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's all to do with uh, the king thinking he had divine powers and faith and all that sort of rubbish. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, so the next one, in 1788, we've been doing a few of these recently, uh, Connecticut became the fifth state to ratify the US Constitution. Uh, and then um, five years on from that, uh, 1793, we have the first hot air balloon flight in the Ooh. USA. Uh, lifts off in Philadelphia. Nice. So that's quite interesting, isn't that's it? That's cool, yeah. So what's that? That's uh, 228 years ago. Uh, so wow. uh, I, I tend to associate balloon flight with the Montgolfier, Montgolfier brothers, actually. So um, I did have a little Ladybird book on that. Those of you who know are a bit obsessed with those things. So... Um, I think did you was, see? Did you see a film called The Aeronauts that was released maybe. in two thousand nineteen with the first lady who went up? Oh yeah, super super high up into the air. Super high. Mm, that was really interesting. I think last mm. week or the week before we we talked about Pitt the Younger becoming prime minister at the age of twenty three. Um, in seventeen ninety nine, he has a lot to be um, responsible for. He introduced income tax, which was levied to raise uh, war funds to deal with the Napoleon, who obviously was. Uh, rampaging across Europe at the time. Um, and then um, in 1806, uh, Horatio Nelson uh, received a state funeral after his death um, as a hero, probably one of the most famous deaths um, mm. in British history at uh, the Battle of Trafalgar. Um, so um, rest in peace, Horatio, you were a great man. Yeah, cheers. So, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers, man. On This Week in History... And welcome back to the second part of On This Week in History. 
I really must get a better system for um, recording all my notes, you know, because um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's really quite difficult having 20-odd facts and, 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 and putting them in order. Well, it is for me because I'm a bit of a retard, I think. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, so in 1811, the first women's golf tournament ever was held. Ooh, That's quite interesting, 1811. Isn't it? You like playing golf, don't you, Drew? I love a bit of golf, yeah. you have a good swing, haven't you? Mm-hmm. You're a good swinger. Yeah, hit about 300 yards on the drive, I reckon. Oh, that's because he's Ooh. so so. Powerful. They don't call him Armstrong for nothing. <laughs> no, they don't call him. Yeah, that's what they call him nothing, yeah. Oh. Nothing, uh, nothing Armstrong. Um, in 1858, Anson Jones uh, became the last president. He was the last president, sorry. Anson Jones, who was the last president of the Republic of Texas. Callum, very interesting. That is very interesting. Committed suicide. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why, but... Um, Quite interesting, because Texas at that point was obviously not in the Union. Lone Star uh, State. Lone Star State, exactly, as we've discussed before. Um, in 1861, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-P-I, Mississippi, succeeded from the Union. So it left the Union, obviously, was one of the prime Confederate states, and obviously led to the dreadful bloodshed and division in America, which to some extent exists to this very day, I would suggest. Um, and then um, one of the things uh, some of you may know, I, I'm very into history, and I did A-level history at school and studied European history, and so this is something I know a lot about, the uh, formation of Italy as its own independent country. Okay. Um, so in 1878, Umberto I became the king of Italy. Mm. So prior to that, um, Italy, like Germany, before it was basically a succession of... Uh, states, so you had Savoy, um, Milan, you know, Naples, Venice. They were all separate kingdoms mm. with their own little rulers. Um, so Italy Became probably um, again just uh, there's pre- precious little good television on at the moment. So one of the things um, I've really got into, so I would, I would uh, recommend this to you. If you um, go onto YouTube, mm. there's a wonderful series on uh, which is called "Which Country Do You Love? Which Country Do You Hate?" Oh, okay. uh, and the guy goes round. Uh, so far, I've watched twenty countries: so mm. Austria, Germany, France. And I basically stop people in the street and say, "Which country do you hate?" <laughs> uh, and, and it's quite interesting. America gets probably is right up there, but mm. um, the Dutch, for instance, really interesting. The Dutch hated the French. Oh, okay. Um, what well, is that then? Well, they consider them to be very rude oh. uh, and arrogant. Um, and not very nice people. So was, anyway, um, that's just saying, that's, that's quite interesting. So I, I, I absolutely love Italy and Greece for what it's worth. Um, Me too. Mm-hmm. Me too. Then moving on, 1894, the New England Telephone and Telegraph Company installed the first battery-operated telephone switchboard. Oh, wow. So what was that, 127 years ago. So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty pretty impressive, isn't it? Um and then um, in 1895, um, I don't know if Callum will know this. Have you heard of um, Richard Dreyfus? No. It's probably one of the most infamous trials in, uh, in history. There's been several films. I mean, it was, Dreyfus was a Jewish um, officer in the French army. Right. Uh, and he was convicted of treason and uh, stripped of his rank. Um, and uh, basically, the, the reasons and motives for this were... Anti-Semitic. Oh, really? Driven, um, and um, I, I can't remember how many years it took. I think it was about seven years, and it was proven, in fact, that another person was responsible, mm. uh, and and Dreyfus was was acquitted. Um, uh, so, so if you've um, it, 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 check it out, there's uh, lots of book, books and films um, about the Dreyfus affair, um, and this happened in 1895. Uh, then uh, where are we now? Oh yes, <laughs> got uh, one 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 more fact from uh, the second part today. Um, in 1937, the Italian regime, so effectively um, Mussolini, uh, banned marriage between Italians and Abyssinians. Um, Abyssinia, obviously, being what is now called Ethiopia, uh, which at the time was an Italian uh, kingdom, effectively. Um, there was a, a, a war between uh, Italy and, and the Abyssinians for um, for several years. Uh, so it's quite interesting. And of course, um, if you now take uh, the leader of the Rasta faith, Haile Selassie, he was he was effectively the king of um, Abyssinia. Bringing you the news of old on this week in history with Paul Waite. I am Paul Waite, and welcome back to the first ever filmed 
version of On This Week in History, whoop, whoop. which is our ever popular podcast, um, which I think is the most listened to, watched thing on Aspen Wake Media, which mm. um, obviously I'm quite proud of, yes. to tell you the truth. Yes. So, the final part of On This Week in History today, uh, and we've got all the way up to 1918. Uh, and uh, interestingly, M R double S R double S R double P R Mississippi became the first state to enact prohibition, which was the 18th Amendment to the original Constitution. So that basically meant no alcohol. Yeah. So. America was not a fun place to be in in the twenties. Mm. So, um, no. uh, but obviously, what that did it drove uh, created crime, massive mm. crime. People Al Capone, moonshine. Um, you know, that's, yeah, moonshine. Obviously, illegal uh, distilleries. Um, I can't for life, and, and it became a very sort of sanctimonious mm. society. To be to be honest, you know, like the Easy Man pubs or, or what they're called, or something like that, that were like the secret the secret pubs that you could go to. Oh, really? Like that. Really? Yeah, that I've never heard that term before. Mm. The next one, um, my fav- maybe my favourite author of all time is a guy called Edward Rice, Edgar Rice Burroughs. I have all of his books, so maybe fifty, mm. uh, I guess. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs is mostly famous for Tarzan. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, the books I love the most are the John Carter of Mars series. Uh, there is a really good film that came out about five years ago called John Carter of Mars, which I would urge uh, people to watch. And it's a it's a Mars in 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 local Martian is Barsoom, mm. uh, and he and John Carter falls in love with a beautiful princess called Deja Torres. Um, uh, he's a cavalry officer from about eighteen seventy. Gets thrown into to Mars and as a teenager I was lost uh, in the in the wondrous writing of Edgar Rice Burroughs oh and nice it is um, yeah, the whole collection so anyway so 1929 Tarzan first appeared um, in print so um, oh. so uh, a, a very <laughs> special a very special moment for me a great a great great man um, in 1954 Greenland uh, it's interesting Greenland featured in the Vikings oh yeah um uh, and it was called Greenland because it wasn't green. That was a, that was a, <laughs> yeah. it was a little Viking joke. It's like a little holiday. Um, so in 1954, uh, the, the coldest temperature ever recorded, minus 87 degrees Fahrenheit, minus wow. 66 degrees centigrade, wow. uh, was recorded. Um, in 1959, again, um, a, a series I remember, obviously this, this when it was launched, I wasn't quite born. So 1959, uh, Rawhide premiered on CBS TV. Uh, so this is, I don't know if you've heard this song, so rolling, 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 rollin', keep them darkies rolling. That was the theme Rawhide. That was the theme tune to Rawhide, starring Clint, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood, wasn't it? So it was Clint Eastwood's big break. Um, he played a guy called Rowdy Yates. He was still really young at the time. It was black and white, wasn't it, Rawhide? Yeah. So, so this uh, was before The Good, The Bad and The Ugly then, much before. Well, that's, yeah, how he, that's, yeah. how got, that's how he got the part. Mm. So he was Rowdy Yates, and he was basically the the, the sort of foreman. Was that very um, twenty years before um, Good Badly? Okay, no, only no, no, ten years. Oh, only ten yeah. years was it? Yeah. So um, who was the yeah. main character of that? A big, big guy. He's, 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 he committed suicide. Whoever the main guy was, but was I can't a shame. remember. He was like six foot four, like big guy, like could have been like a big guy. massive star, you know. But <laughs> took his life. In nineteen sixty, the building of the Aswan Dam began, which is obviously incredibly important. Aswan Dam, um, mm. which um, I think I'm right in saying. So this basically. Um, led to obviously um, Egypt um, being able to grow more crops, etc., because it was more fertile. Was it's a uh, barren wasteland? A barren wasteland, indeed. Um, and um, three more facts. So, uh, 1969, the first trial flight of Concorde. Uh, Concorde, obviously, a, a, a project very much synonymous with Bristol, mm-hmm. uh, Filton in particular. Um, one of the great um, tragedies of, of my lifetime. Uh, I think is the fact that we develop such supersonic technology, which has been abandoned, which makes mm. absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Did you ever fly Concorde, Paul? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Mm. Um, in 1972, um, th- this really is the, 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 a blast from the past, which um, maybe um, the way that this country's going, we may be closer to this sort of behaviour than we have done for many years. So in 1972, the coal, coal miners began a national strike, the first for 50 years. Um, I remember as a 12-year-old at the time, um, basically it was total anarchy, um, and obviously you know, Margaret Thatcher basically needed to come in to... Mm. Uh, M- Margaret Thatcher basically came along and, and, and killed the unions. I mean, that's yeah. probably the best way of looking at it. Um, I know that not all of you will agree with my point of view on this, but um, anyway, that's what happened in 1972. And finally, in 1998, uh, uh, International Hockey News selected the great Wayne Gretzky as the greatest ever hockey player. Um, so that was rather neat. Um, a very 
convenient of them doing that on This Week in History, linking up with my Canadian special uh, and with Gretzky being a bit of a hero of mine. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that today. Aspen Weight Radio Podcasts. Download at aspenweightradio.com or subscribe on iTunes, Spotify or Google Podcasts.